Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. St. Patrick's Purgatory St. Patrick's Purgatory can be found in County Donegal, Ireland, on a small island in the middle of a lake known as Loch Derg. While this isn't actually purgatory, it is instead a monastery that was built over what the locals once believed to be a gateway to hell. So, close enough. As you can imagine, it's an unusual place. According to legend, Jesus showed St. Patrick a cave on this tiny island. When St. Patrick looked into the darkness, he had a sudden and terrible vision of the punishments of hell. St. Patrick then continued to use the cave as proof of what would happen to the local people if they didn't obey the laws of God. Anyone who looked in the cave was able to see the kinds of torments and miseries that were happening in the dark part of the afterlife. It was basically a really, really powerful scare tactic. But of course, this is just a story. We don't know if St. Patrick was really here, or if he really did see a vision of horrible cruelty when looking into the mouth of the mysterious cave. What we know for sure is that the monastery on the island is still standing. At least part of it is. The structure was built sometime before the 15th century, with nothing left of it today except its foundation and some bare stones from its walls. Number 9. Bimkund There is a mysterious pool in India that seems to be bottomless. It's called Bimkund, and no scientist has ever been able to figure out how deep it is. The pool is located near Bajna village and is a natural water tank that gets its source from deep within a cave. There's a small temple-like structure built beside it for easy access so that visitors can bathe in its supposedly holy waters. Going down to the pools is an adventure in itself. You have to climb an ancient stairway down into an underground cavern in order to finally reach the pool far below. But we don't actually know much about this mysterious pool. Scientists allegedly probed Bimkund, trying to figure out its depth, but never managed to get any correct readings. They put their instruments down over 600 feet, but the water just kept going. It could very well be the deepest natural pool anywhere on the planet, but no one knows for certain because we've never gotten definitive measurements. This is what the locals say anyway, who are probably quite happy to keep the pool bottomless and the mystery alive. The truth is that the pool can almost definitely be measured if a professional geologist took enough time to do it, but then that would ruin the mystique of the place. Number 8. The Phrygian Valley The Phrygian Valley was once the heartland of the Great Phrygian Kingdom. These ancient people occupied most of Turkey, rising to power after the Hittite Empire collapsed around the year 1200 BC. By 700 BC, the Phrygia had become the dominant culture in the region. We know they were likely allies with the Trojans during the epic Trojan War. The famous King Midas, the one who turned all he touched to gold, was the king of Phrygia. Even Alexander the Great ventured to Phrygia during his travels as he tried to become the king of the world. The point is that there is a lot of history in the region. The Phrygian Valley is enormous, stretching hundreds of miles and boasting some of the most unbelievable archaeological sites in the world. For example, Gordian is here, the ancient Phrygian capital that reached its peak around 600 BC. This is where the tomb of great King Midas can be found. Then there's Yazilikaya, or more commonly known as the Midas Monument. It's a massive tomb facade that isn't really a tomb. Someone simply carved a giant tomb face into a rock, probably during the 7th century BC. Then at the bottom, where the entrance to the tomb should have been, was only a small niche for a statue of the goddess Cybele. That statue is gone now, and the whole place is in ruins. The truly magical part about the Phrygian Valley is the sheer scope of archaeological wonder. You can't go far in any direction without stumbling upon some ancient monument, hidden tomb, or lost city. Why do you think the Midas Monument was built to look like a tomb facade? I'd like to read your theories in the comments. Number 7. The Great Gate of Madagascar The Ambohimanga Main Gate is probably an archaeological marvel you've never heard of before. That's because it comes from a town built in the 18th century in rural Madagascar, which isn't exactly an archaeological hotspot. The town of Ambohimanga was naturally shielded by forests, but this wasn't enough to keep them from being attacked. They had to erect a large wall surrounding the city to keep the royal family safe. So the royal family took safety to a level never before seen on this island nation. A huge wall was thrown up along with seven outer gates to protect those within. The main gate wasn't so much a door as it was an enormous stone disc. 
It was like something you would expect to see in a movie blocking the entrance to a magical tomb. The door of the gate was a standing stone weighing 12 tons. It was so ridiculously big that the only way to move it was with 20 strong people pushing it aside. The piece of stone was over 130 feet in circumference. Every night, guards would roll the stone into its position, completely blocking all traffic in and out of the town. It was a pretty clever idea, and it worked for the people of the city. These days, the stone is stuck in place, tucked beside the main entranceway no longer used. But it is still there, as is the walled city of the Marina Kingdom, who ruled over this region 300 years ago. There are royal burial grounds inside the city, pavilions, and even more standing stones. Number 6. Mont Saint-Michel Mont Saint-Michel is arguably the most amazing and most picturesque place in all of France. It also looks like something straight out of a Disney movie. Mont Saint-Michel is the name of an island kept by an abbey that seems to defy gravity. Mont Saint-Michel can trace its origin back to the early 8th century. In the nearby town of Avranche, a bishop by the name of Albert had a vision. He claimed to have been visited by the archangel Michael, who pressured him into building a church on top of an island just out to sea. This island would become the foundation for the abbey in the middle of a bay between Normandy and Brittany. Because of its beautiful location, Mont Saint-Michel has been capturing people's imaginations for centuries. From the year 966 on, the Dukes of Normandy all supported the development of a massive Benedictine abbey on top of this small island. After the Dukes of Normandy, the French kings continued to support the development with whatever funds and political muscle was needed. The place became a major center for learning, with some of the brightest minds in Europe flocking to the abbey to study and write manuscripts. It's amazing because the abbey still stands today. There are massive walls around the island originally designed to keep the English out. Today, they are all historical buildings. There is even a small village tucked onto the lower tiers of the island where people used to live. Have you ever visited Mont Saint-Michel? Or do you want to? If so, let me know about your experience in the comments. And now for number 5. But first, want to give a big shout out to Molly Perkins and Trey Issues 13. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 5. The Caves of Ventanillas de Otusco The archaeological site of Ventanillas de Otusco in Peru is as unique as it gets. The place is located over 6,000 feet above sea level, a series of artificial caves that were used around 2,000 years ago for burying the dead. The Cajamarca culture of this region carved narrow holes into the cliffside here, reminiscent of body storage drawers you see in morgues. They then stored their dead inside the carved holes, one to each cubby. This created a massive open-air necropolis with hundreds of deceased looking down into the valleys below. When archaeologists started excavating the necropolis, they were confused about one major thing. They never found any complete skeletons inside the cubby holes. This indicated the caves were used as secondary burial locations. What this means is that when the Cajamarca buried someone, the corpse was put in the ground. Then, after some decomposition had happened, their skull and a handful of their bones were taken out of the ground. These were transported to the caves and stored inside one of the niches. What's strange is that archaeologists have no idea why. They think it has something to do with a death cult, but don't have much of a better explanation than that. It's a total mystery. Number 4. Grimes Point Grimes Point prehistoric rock site is located just outside the town of Fallon in Nevada. You wouldn't even know you were walking through an archaeological zone if not for the signs pointing out the rocks covered in mysterious petroglyphs. It was here that Native Americans left their mark over 8,000 years ago. Not only did the natives leave behind some very curious petroglyphs carved onto the red rocks of the desert, they also left behind some artifacts. Archaeologists studying the site have found pieces of bone and shell and even primitive tools. But for all the research that has been done here, nobody has managed to decipher the meaning of the petroglyphs. Some say the drawings are the constellations in the night sky. Some say it's just a bunch of nonsense scribbled on the boulders. The one thing that's for sure is that when you visit Grimes Point and see the petroglyphs for yourself, your imagination can run wild. Number 3. Underground Pyramid in Bolivia At the ancient fortress of Tiwanaku in western Bolivia, archaeologists discovered an underground pyramid. 
The archaeologists are with the Tiwanaku Archaeological Research Center. They use ground-penetrating radar to identify anomalies underneath the ancient capital of the most important civilization in South America prior to the Inca. These anomalies appear to be mostly monoliths, but there is also one giant anomaly that looks an awful lot like a pyramid. In other words, there are multiple structures, perhaps an entire lost piece of the city, hiding underneath the ground. Researchers say it will take another five years for them to properly excavate the area and see what's actually under their feet. Now, what's even more interesting is that we don't really know who lived in Tiwanaku. Scientists simply call them the Tiwanaku culture. We know that they have close ties to the Wadi people and may have even influenced the Inca who came to power in the north. The people of Tiwanaku flourished from around the year 300 to 1000 AD, with the city becoming one of the biggest and most powerful in all of ancient America. The nearby Lake Titicaca was considered to be the center of the earth, the very place where humans first appeared on the planet. It was Lord Viracocha, the creator of all things, who chose Tiwanaku to be the capital of civilization, according to myth. But alas, this great city only lasted 700 years before being abandoned and left to ruin. How in the world they could have buried a pyramid underneath it is a mystery. Number 2. Mammoth Cave Mammoth Cave is one of the most mysterious places not only in Kentucky, but in all of the United States. It is an ancient underground labyrinth with a depth that nobody has ever been able to measure. The surface of Mammoth Cave National Park is about 80 square miles, but underneath, going deep into the subterranean world hidden below, the area remains shrouded in mystery. There are at least 400 miles of passages and dark caverns that have never been seen by human eyes. That's on top of the 365 miles that have already been mapped. Even today, new caverns are continuously being discovered. As you might have guessed, this is the longest known cave system in the world, according to National Geographic. It's dangerous, dark, and people may have lived in it as far back as 5,000 years. Archaeologists have found proof of mineral mining dating back 3,000 years in the way of ancient mining tools left on the passage floors. But we don't actually know how important this place was to the Native Americans. It's so deep and so confusing and so hard to actually excavate that nobody knows if humans lived in it or even created subterranean cities deep below the ground. Have you ever been here? Let me know your experience in the comments! Number 1. Dos du Dragon Dos du Dragon is a natural protrusion sticking out in the Indian Ocean that looks like a sleeping dragon. It's located on the northern tip of Grand Comore Island, off the coast of East Africa, formed over millions of years. For as long as people have lived on the island, they've referred to the natural formation as the dragon's back. The ridge of the protrusion is covered in standing stones that give life to the dragon's spine, while mossy rocks make the beast look as if it has real shining scales. But of course, it's not a real dragon, at least not that anybody has been able to prove. If there really is a dragon underneath the mossy rocks, I think everyone on Earth would be extremely shocked. The island itself formed millions of years ago thanks to volcanic activity. One of the nearby volcanoes erupted in 2006. There isn't much in the way of archaeological sites here, it's really the dragon that's the main attraction. There is a walking path along the ridges of its spine, allowing visitors to take in the unbelievable scenery as they stroll along the back of the dragon. Thanks for watching! Which of these amazing, mysterious places would you love to visit if you had the chance? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon!